So today, we will be discussing some myths and truths regarding children's nutrition. So why don't we discuss these myths and truths right now with our fellow nutritionists and fellow Amway parents. Myth number one, kids will grow out of being picky eaters. So no need to worry. Okay, wonderful. Wow, we'll see Joyce is done, Ka'ain is done. Disagree, 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 disagree. All our MWA parents disagree. Mm. That's interesting. I wonder what you think about this as well, for those of you parents watching in. Why don't let's hear from our first MWA parent. Joyce, mm. please share with us why you disagree. Yes, I disagree. Um, because I have two extremely stubborn picky eaters at home, all right? My boy, as he grows older, he is less picky, mm -hmm. but he still picks his fruits and vegetables. Right. So my girl is even worse, all right? She really is really picky with her food, all right? To the point that they don't try new food. It's very hard to try, get them to try new food. Right. So this is where supplementation comes into play. It's quite important to supplement since they're not getting it from, from the food. Uh, and uh, you know the important is because of you know if not you will have a issue in the future. So I disagree that they will grow out of being a picky. I eater. see. Mm. So your daughter being picky, jaga badan lah, is it? Uh, I think so lah. <laughs> she she is slimmer than the brother lah. Okay, jaga badan <laughs> like the mummy. Wow. Okay, so right now let's hear from our nutritionist, Sue. What are your thoughts? Thank you, Joyce. I believe a lot of parents out there are having the same issues. Because I myself is a dietitian, sometimes my kid can be very fussy in eating too. As parents, we always worried about what our kids eat. And most kids are picky eaters. This is part of their development. They do outgrow this in time if we manage it properly. Yes, there are a lot of kids do not like to eat fruits and vegetables, especially vegetables, because fruits give them the sweetness, right? So because sometimes when I prepare the food for my kids like broccoli, when I put the broccoli in front of my baby, then she will say, Mommy, yuck, I don't like to eat. Right, so this is very common because picky eater is like, when you ask, you throw a stone to every parent, they will say, oh, I have the same concerns. Yeah, so maybe, Tang, maybe you can share about your kids. Oh, um, I same with Joyce. I have two kids, one boy and one girl. My boy love me. Hmm. My girl love Vegetables, they are totally different. Wow. Wait, wait, wait. I want to send my girl to your house and make friends with your daughter. Okay, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens is whenever there's any meat, my boy will love it. And when I serve him any vegetables, no, no. So some people may see that, hey, your boy is a little bit chubby. So I believe definitely enough nutrition, but actually it's not. Because we know that he may be a little bit uh, chubby but mm. still lack of nutrients that is required mm. Mm. same like my boy same my boy also can go to your house yeah <laughs> they need to mix a bit more huh? yeah I think yeah, mix yeah, a bit more so the good more. habits will rub off each other yes yep. right right okay what about Jing? what are your thoughts on that yes we need to make sure their diets is balanced and variety for example, certain young kids that just like to eat white rice and chicken only they probably only eat uh, chicken get the proteins and rice, get the carbohydrates but lack of vitamins and minerals from fruits and vegetables even with fruits and vegetables we also need to make sure that they are getting a variety of fruits and vegetables with different colours yeah. for example, we always mention 5 colours a day, right? Mm. because each of the colours will give us different benefits mm. if we did not manage the piggy eaters properly this will link to incomplete nutrition which will cause some health problems such as low immunity level, poor digestive health, impact growth and development and so on. I see. So mm. after hearing from you, I think just now the idea about getting your kids to mix with each other is beginning to sound more like a fantastic idea, isn't it? Correct. It's a good idea. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, before we go to our second myth, let's hear from one more parent. Let's hear from Kaksham, our veteran mom. <laughs> veteran mom. Can I veteran send mom. my son to your house since you have a daughter? <laughs> and since Joyce is sending her daughter. Oh, your son. Huh? Oh, still got chance one. <laughs> <laughs> 
Committed mother. Play date. Committed uh, to the future. I agree with what Chi Ying said because my son at one time always wanted to take just white rice, but he's also fussy with fruits and vegetables. So as a mother, as a parent, I just want him to get the right nutrients so he grows up strong and healthy. Right. So basically, your children are a little bit older, but even at that older age, they are still picky. Because it starts young. Right. Right. Mm. Yes, Shamini, you made me remember that at one point of time, my kids do like to eat mm. white rice, but now she can accept a variety of food. If you still remember what I shared just now, kids do outgrow this in time if we manage it properly, because picky eating is part of their development. But of course, we need to make sure their weight and height are within the normal range. It is normal for children to against a food when they are first exposed to it. Do not give up and just keep trying, even if they reject new food at first, especially vegetables. It may take multiple attempts, and it can take as many as ten or more times for the kids to accept it. However, do not pressure them. Just keep them enjoy the food, right? Just do be patient, and as well for the parents out there, be patient to your kids because we live, we love our kids. Myth number two: My children are taking a daily multivitamin. So they're getting all the nutrients, right? Hmm. I wonder what our guests think. Do they agree or disagree? Let's see. Ah, Kak Ain is the first one. Kak Ain agrees. Joyce disagrees. Ooh, Tang has written a big no over there. Kak Cham also disagrees. So looks like Kak Ain is the only one that agrees with that statement. Kain, why don't you tell us why you have a different opinion from the rest of our guests here? Mm, because I believe in providing the kids with a supplement due to many factors. For example, their daily meals may not fill up their body nutrition needs. And honestly, uh, also not good to read the gaps. Yeah, um, kids' body size do not reflect this, whether there are sufficient of nutrition. It may be due to genetics or other factors. Yeah. But anyway, I'm not an expert in nutrition. <laughs> uh, kind. Yeah. Um, I disagree, mm -hmm. of course, to a certain extent. Okay. Uh, I have two kids. I provide them with multivitamins. Mm -hmm. But if I, when I provide them with multivitamins, and if they rely only on multivitamins, mm -hmm. then they lost the uh, interest or they don't enjoy the food. But Another way, if I only provide them with food, mm -hmm. then they may not have sufficient nutrients from food. Because as parents, sometimes when we go out, we eat out, we eat yeah. something good, yeah. rewarding, but may not be nutrition friendly. Mm -hmm. So I want to have a balance of food and nutrition. So I disagree to a certain extent. Yes, Tang. Multivitamins provide some of the vitamins and the nutrients a child needs for good health. However, multivitamins are intended to supplement a balanced diet, not substitute a healthy diet. A healthy, balanced diet with a variety of food groups is still required and important for kids on their proper growth and development. Children and adults too need different nutrients found in fruits and vegetables. Healthy protein source, and also complex carbohydrates. But certain nutrients such as vitamin C is easily found in fruits and vegetables but not in significant amounts. Hence, this is where multivitamins comes in as it is very important to enhance optimal nutrition support for growing kids. Yes, Ching, multivitamins are essential for the kids to fill the nutritional gaps. But do remember, we still encourage them to eat a variety of food. As a parent, we can also consider adding some of the nutritional supplement based on the children's needs, like the calcium or DHA. Different nutrients are required for some specific health. As a parent, we want to strengthen kids' immunity. We can provide them vitamin C and also consider some of the important nutrients to boost up the immunity, like the probiotic and zinc. As a wrap up. Supplement like multivitamins is important, but at the same time, we need to offer our kids a variety of food too. Make sure them get the nutrients from different food groups. Uh -huh. 
Now I know <laughs> the importance of multivitamins. And also, we need to provide varieties of fruits and vegetables to my kids. Uh, Alright, so <laughs> enjoy food and enjoy life. Then fill the gap with supplement. Okay. You want to change your answer now? <laughs> <laughs> okay, now let's go to myth number three. Myth number three. Is snacking unhealthy? I wonder what they think this time. Yeah. Okay, so we have our first responses. Karain, again. Mm. Ah, disagree, agree? Ah, not really. Ah. Okay, we'll come back, we'll come to that. Disagree. Okay, so we've got two disagree, one agree, and one not really, or maybe he's just confused. Right, so why don't we hear from Joyce first? Joyce, please. Uh, sure. Um, I think it depends on what kind of snacking, whether okay. it's the uh, healthier version or, or the unhealthier version. So okay. I make reference more to the unhealthier version, that's why I say agree. It's right. because um, if we don't uh, have moderation, or especially with kids, mm. if we don't really you know, put some, some sort of control or enforcement, they may overeat. Right, they will may snack on the unhealthy snacks. So some right. of the kids may end up having the unhealthy snack as the main meal. Mm. So uh, to that to that point, that's why I said agree. So that's why you say agree. Yes. Well, thank you, Joyce. I think your response makes sense. Mm. So Sue, as our nutritionist, what are your thoughts? Yeah. I mean, what Joyce said just now is kind of correct because I would say it depends on what kind of snack they are having. Mm. Snacking is when you consume food or beverages between your regular main meals. Healthy snacking is good because it keeps us from overeating on the next meal, like dinner for example. However, the problem for the kids nowadays is that they like to go for some processed food, mm. like the potato chips, mm. chocolate, which are usually high in sugar, high calories and low nutrition profile right so this will eventually lead to some health concerns like the weight gain and that's why childhood obesity is one of the serious health concerns nowadays so as a parent be aware of the sugar content the calories intake and always go for the one with the high nutrients content mm. so snacking can be good if you offer the right amount and healthy food. When we do a meal planning, always remember three main things. Moderate, variety, and balance. Mm. Right. Mm. Okay, uh, very interesting thoughts. I'd like to hear right now from Shamini. Shamini, your kids, how are they like? Snacks yeah, and my snacks. son, yeah. the inseparable two. <laughs> so your son is married to snacks? Yes, and I, I can't remember a day my house didn't have snacks. Oh. I like to visit your house sometimes yeah. too. Yeah. Chocolates, <laughs> chips, wow. sweets. Wow. Okay. That's the three I remember. There's a lot more behind the scene. Not, right. only, not only Deepawali, every day. <laughs> yes. Every day Deepawali. <laughs> So I, I do understand snacking is essential for him sometimes. So what I do sometimes is I try to mix and match. I try to put in some fruits and nuts and shift around some alternatives. So mm. at least he's still happy to snack. And I'm happy that he's healthily snacking. <laughs> okay. So that's my tip. Would you say that his snacking habits are more on the healthy side? Is that why you disagree with the statement? Yes, because I've managed to get him to eat some healthy snacks. Ah, so you've actually telling us now this concept about healthy snacking. Yes. Okay, that's interesting. Hmm. Okay. Uh, now I need to send my kids to your. Oh, no problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem. Anytime. So your, your healthy snacks is like cucumber, broccoli. No, 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 no. Actually, my healthy snacks is I have lots of nuts because oh. my son likes nuts ah. and he likes more of fruits. And sometimes even biscuits and all, I will choose like without the cream and things ah, like that. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Because he needs energy and boys are always hungry. Right. Yeah, so. <laughs> so he makes his own snacking choices yeah, or you make the choices I, I, for him? Yeah, I go out with him and we have a deal. Oh, a deal? Like, yeah. Okay. Like, okay, uh, I give you a choice. <laughs> there are certain days, I have to be honest, it's a cheat day. Okay. <laughs> so, so now the biscuit, you choose this or this. Because among the two healthy choices, he'll definitely like one. Yeah. Wow. Uh, You're hurt, right? Good this tip, good tip. So clever. I let you choose snack A or snack B. Both are so healthy. 
<laughs> now let's hear from our next nutritionist. Let's hear from Ching. Yes, agree with Shamini. Snacks should not be given a packet of potato chips, sweets, or chocolate. Instead, a lot of healthy options out there. Just like smoothie with just a fruits and veggie would be a better choice and this is a better snacking idea for kids that can benefit them by fulfilling the nutritional gap and at the same time can satisfy their cravings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, I didn't know that even a smoothie can be considered a snack. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> healthy Sounds good. smoothie, healthy smoothie. Healthy with fruits, not ah, real. Fruits. Mm -hmm. Oh, right, right, right. right. So, okay. chew uh, Sorry. Can I say Chuyao? Yeah, my name is Chuyao. Oh, so, at least I passed in their list for once. Uh. <laughs> well done, Kak Shamini. Okay, myth number four. Children can just eat more fruits to compensate for the lack of vegetables in their diet. Let's see what they think. But I think I know this one. Hmm. Joyce and Kak Sham already disagree. Okay, Kak Ain pun dis... Ha! Huh. Semua pun disagree. Tak setuju. Hmm. Okay. I want to hear from Mr. Tak Setuju. Tang. <laughs> tak setuju. Definitely. <laughs> Kenapa? Kenapa? First, uh, fruits provide us with vitamins. Vitamins. Uh, vegetables provide us with minerals. Minerals. In order to have a balance of vitamins and minerals, we need fruits and vegetables. Mm. So that's why tak boleh ganti ganti lah. We cannot mix and match. Mm. Uh, sorry, we can mix and match. We cannot ganti compensate. Ah. <laughs> and at my at my home, my boy loves fruits because okay. of the natural sweet okay. sweetness. Okay. Okay. Mm. He don't like vegetables. Mm. The bitterness of mm. the vegetable. He said, "What?" So, as a parent, <laughs> as a nutritionist, I also want to encourage him to eat more vegetables and sometimes I have to force him to do that. Force him. Yeah, and then you can see the black face. <sighs> and then, ah. So, that's the challenge. We know it's good, but mm. how to encourage them to eat more? That is the challenge. You take the vegetables, stuff it inside the fruit and give him the fruit. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> good idea. Okay, good idea. Okay, what about Kain? Yeah, definitely not lah. Both are required mm. to our human body. Yeah, mm. especially for kids they are growing up and go to school. Uh, they require all multivitamins from both. Yeah, mm. but 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 the issue now here, how we can influence them to taking both. Ah, mm. Mm. <laughs> so it's about issue now, huh? Yeah, issue semasa, <laughs> and the issue semasa <laughs> is about. Influence. Correct. Okay, let's go over to our nutritionist, Sue. Maybe you can add on some of your comments, please. Yeah, I think most of the kids will love to eat fruits. I believe most of the parents out there will feel the same, right? <laughs> yeah, because I mean, for my kids, I mean, except the durian, because my kids do not like the durian, <laughs> because the durian <laughs> do not provide durian. the sweetness test, you see. Oh my. Okay, so sometimes when we offer the food for our kids, we can tell them a story. Okay, so we can like for example like what um, Shamini shared just now, we can tell them a story, the benefits of the single fruit, like this is good for you, this is um, to make you grow stronger. And another tip is that we can get them involved in the kitchen. That mm. can be a little mm. share. Mm. Good idea, good idea. Yeah. Mm. So what I usually do at home is that I will get my daughter to open the fridge and ask them, so today you want to eat the broccoli or carrot, you want to eat the lemon or you want to eat the apple. So just mm. let them to choose. Good. And they definitely will choose either one. Right. Okay, yes. so yes. some of the parents out there, you can practice it at home. And it's really work because they have no choice. They have to choose A or B. Okay, so Your this kids. is another tip for all of you. Okay? okay. Next play date, Sue's house. <laughs> <laughs> so just now you mentioned about getting them involved in the food preparation, right? Yes. And then I heard a lot of mmm mmm coming from this side. I, right. Have you tried some of these techniques? Yes. Yes. I have done that it, with it my works? son. Uh, yes, to a certain extent it does. Okay. I mean, of course, sometimes he will mess up the place being a small boy. <laughs> but okay. we have fun together yeah. and eventually we have a story like uh, Sue said. And right, then right. we create a story and she's right, you know, if you just have that and you create a story and have fun, he will definitely eat some of it. 
Okay. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I think as long as we don't mind if the kitchen get messy, then yeah, that's the, good, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing. That's the thing. I think we rather they eat healthy yes. than worry about messy kitchen, yes. right? Because because yeah. I know my wife does that sometimes. They, yes. they, the kids get involved in making the pizza, yeah, yeah. make yes, smiley face, yes, yes. and then suddenly oh, they finish everything. Oh, <laughs> they feel an achievement, and to me, I'm happy because I have a bond time with him. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay, yes. now let's hear from Chi Ying, our next nutritionist. Okay, as a summary, parents, please take note. Ooh. What does a kid three years old and above need every day? Ooh, every day, okay. This includes water. Number one, two <laughs> servings of fruits and three servings of vegetables. Secondly, a balanced diet is made up of foods from the five food groups: carbohydrates, fruits and vegetables, protein, dairy, and healthy fats. Remember, three main meals with one to two nutritious snacks. Of course, complete nutrition with supplements for balanced diet. And also clean water. Yes, you are right. <laughs> Key spring water. Um, can I just add to that? Yeah, because um, I work in Amway as a category nutrition category manager, so mm -hmm. I agree with what the nutri nutritionists are saying. And uh, it is indeed very challenging for children to consume all food groups, mm. especially from uh, fruits yes. yep. and vegetables, right? Yes. I have two kids myself, so I yep. know. Mm. Mm. Right? Can you imagine? Huh. Mine? Five? Are you? <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag <laughs> Peng San. Okay? <laughs> I, got, I salute you, I salute you. <laughs> okay. So, um, but do you guys know that four out of five children mm -hmm. between uh, age one and six years old mm -hmm. uh, in Malaysia do not consume fruits and vegetables? Mm -hmm. One, okay. four out of five, you know, four. that's a lot. So, Joy, and huh? my son from tomorrow eats more vegetables. Uh, good <laughs> luck to him. <laughs> <laughs> and in Singapore itself, only 25% of this age group actually meet the minimum requirement of fruits and vegetable mm -hmm. intake. So it's, it's not high, it's very low, mm -hmm. right? And while from other studies, we also know that uh, we see kids between 2 to 11 years old are usually picky eaters, mm -hmm. right? And that's in Malaysia. And in Singapore, one out of two are picky eaters. <laughs> so, selamat lah. Anak I, yeah, yeah, yeah. picky eaters, yeah. are, no excuse. Okay, so um, to ensure that our kids, right, is uh, 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 are getting the complete nutrition from mm -hmm. the diet and body, you know, that cannot provide, right, when the food mm -hmm. and the fruits and vegetables cannot give you the nutrient, that's where the uh, supplements come in. Yep. So, mm -hmm. our nutritional supplement comes in as a gap filler. Not medicine, mm -hmm. ah, not magic pill, ah. it yep. comes in as a uh, gap filler. So, um, based on the Euro Monitor data also, we see that, you know, some people will say, hey, you know, why need to buy kids' nutrition, right? So, based on the Euro Monitor uh, data, we see that the uh, 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 upward trend for the demand of children are uh, nutritional supplements, both in Malaysia and uh, mm. Singapore, right? It's going uptrend, alright? Is it's it because of down. the awareness of parents to getting them more? You are right. Mm. So, we know that parents nowadays are more, you know, well equipped, right? Not like parents dulu dulu, ah, don't mm, know anything, yeah. ikut je kan? Mm. But parents nowadays, they are can uh, 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 survey, yes. especially yeah. from baby to kids. They will go and survey, they go and find out, you know, what is good for my mm -hmm. kid, yep. natural or not. And with all the available uh, platform, online platform mm. right now, it's just fingertips. You ask can Mr. Just, Google. Ma, ask Mr. Google, mm. ask YouTube, whatever. Search, mm. da -da -da, compare. Done. Them. Then right. you have the in, uh, readily information for you to make a, a decision mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on your own. Yeah. Yeah. So then that's where then people will ask, oh, you have so many choices in the market. Mm. How should I choose? <laughs> where should the, I go? The next question. Yeah, it's like how, you know, that's why you see in Facebook, there's parents group, mm. baby mm. group, you know, you ask mm. for advice. Mm. So mm. I think uh, some of the tips that we can give is that, you know, when you're looking for a, a supplement for your kids, Always look for something that is clean, mm -hmm. right? It's uh, safe um, and effective. We mm -hmm. want it to work, right? Otherwise, yep. you pay for nothing. And mm -hmm. of course, according to your own own budget, mm -hmm. your, yeah. your mm -hmm. uh, comfort level. That's to the parents. But to the kids, what is most important? It has to be taste, taste friendly. Yeah. 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 And the format the must be. Yeah. 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 Don't ask me, you know, big, big yes. tablet, uh, correct, agami, correct. Ke, liquid powder. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Kids being kids, uh, I think we cannot run away from yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. They judge mm. everything by the taste. Yes, yeah. the correct, taste. Correct, correct, yeah. correct. So yeah, just like to have kids. I'm sharing. Mm. Mm. Thank you for that. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you so much, Joyce. I think that was really helpful. Yes, mm. yes. I agree with what Joyce shared just now. 
And to add on as well, our body cannot naturally produce all the necessary vitamins and minerals. And this is very important to ensure that our kids get these important building blocks in their diet. But most of the time, the kids do not meet the nutrients requirements and cause the nutritional gaps. With that, nutritional supplements are important to fill the gap and help to support children's growth and development. Do remember, we have a range of Nutrient Kit supplements to support children's health. There are multivitamins and iron chewable tablets, chewable calcium magnesium tablets, chewable natural C, and kids' favorite gummy with DHA, which is just launched in January this year. Hmm. Well, everything is so chewable now, I feel like chewing. Here, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. chew, yao. chew. Ah. Ah. Can I take home one of those? Huh? <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Now, we have just one more myth to discuss. Myth number five. Children are more likely to fall sick the more time that they spend outside. Hmm. Let's see what they have to say. Okay, let's have a look. Kain agrees. Joyce agrees. Tang also setuju and Kak Shamini, you're the only one who disagrees. Oh, ah, interesting. Because his son eat fruits and vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe that's why. All right, actually, let's actually agree or disagree. I have my response later. Oh. 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 We will reserve airtime for you. So oh. should I change it? Should I change it to agree? Now? <laughs> Okay, before you decide what you're going to do with your response, let's hear from Tang first. Okay. Why setuju? Um, my two kids, one at five years old, one at seven years old. During MCO time, when we are all grounded, staying at home, uh, not going out anywhere, I can see that their health status or situations is actually good. Mm -hmm. They don't fall sick easily. One thing is because I believe at home, uh, we provide an environment place that is very good and healthy for them mm. and of course mm. their immune system mm. yep. but when once they go out once they eat out mm. without sufficient nutrients and supplements and when they expose outside mm. that's where the viruses or the bacteria they are uh, they get with mm. each other mm. so i can say that for my kids who is staying out they can easily get sick. Mm. So basically what you're saying is that when they stay outdoors, they get exposed to mm. more of these viruses and germs and all these yeah. things. So that's why you agree, higher chance of falling sick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. betul tang. Anak I masuk sekolah dua hari dah MC balik dah. Aduh, cepat ya. Dua hari MC, betul ke? Dua hari masuk, terus MC. Oh, ish. Dua hari masuk, dua hari MC. Dua hari masuk, dua hari MC. Dia nak MCO lagi lah. Okay, so let's go over to our nutritionist. Let's see what they have to say. Yes, actually I agree to a certain point. When a child stays outdoor, they get more exposure to the bacteria and the viruses from the environment or the people around them. They are naturally more prone to infections. Mm -hmm. As parents, we also want our kids to be more adventurous and active. Mm. Just like my kid, if not because of the pandemic, I wish I can bring her around, you know, to bring her to the park, to the zoo or the sports center. Mm. Well, what we can do now is we need to help our kids to build up a good immune system with the nutrient-dense food. Certain food have the exact nutrients that we can help their immune system and to stay strong as possible. So when they are exposed to the bacteria or germs, they are ready to fight the bacteria. Mm. Okay, so basically you agree to a certain extent. Yeah. yeah so Staying outdoors longer means more exposure right. to viruses. As long as we like need that. to boost out their immune system with the good nutrition, and if mm. possible, we also need to add on the uh, multivitamins and the good mm. nutrients to, to build up a stronger body. Yeah. So once again, what is really key here is the immunity, boosting Correct. up the immune system yes, with exactly. the right supplements, the right nutrients, right? And of course, to get a variety of food. Variety. Yeah, right. that's right. Thanks for the reminder on that. Now, if you remember, I said we are going to reserve some airtime for our veteran <laughs> mama here. 
Kak Shu. Okay, Kak Shang. Okay. You are the only one who agreed. I'm so here. happy because Su agreed to a certain extent. To a certain extent. extent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so happy. Like them, I disagree to a certain extent. Yeah. So which means you are right to a certain extent, lah. Ah, yeah. 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 Veteran. Oh, veteran one. Okay, okay. You can have your say. Come now. Okay. Let's hear from you. Actually, um, I never think so much about it until this pandemic. Because you see, normal life before the pandemic, it's not my son is all the time at home. Mm-hmm. He goes out. Children need to play. It's only after the pandemic and with all this change that he stays a lot at home. Right. So at home, I'm fine. I take care of his immunity. I do whatever he I need to do. Ask him to take care of his hygiene. Stay safe. If you fall sick. Bring him to the doctor because he goes to the uh, babysitter, and babysitter is taking care of other kids. So that's fine as long as he's at home. So the immunity is a daily thing. That's why I'm very happy. At least he eats some fruits because there's some vitamins there, C there to boost up his immunity. But what I also realized that I cannot hold my son all the time at home. I need to bring him out. Now he's back to school. So if I, the immunity at home is strong. Outside, the chances of him falling sick will be less. That's why I right. agree and disagree. So I guess uh, after hearing from both our parents as well as our nutritionists, I guess it's generally true. Um, that's why they largely agree that uh, prolonged exposure outside could lead to, um, you know, falling sick more often. But that doesn't mean that we have to curb our lifestyle. The important thing. The very key thing here, it is still comes back to immunity, right? So, what can we do, and what can and we help you do to boost up the immunity of your children? So, right now, let's hear some final comments from Chiing to help us wrap it all up. Okay, thank you, Chuya. Yes, like what mentioned by Shamini just now. As parents, what you can do the best is to get your kids the good nutrients needed to strengthen immune system. Besides just taking care of their personal hygiene, ensure a complete and balanced diet for your kids to get those immune boosting nutrients like vitamin C, zinc, and probiotics, or consider other food groups or food sources or supplements to fill in the nutritional gap. As we all know. Vitamin C is an antioxidant that is essential to protect our body cell from free radicals damage,、mm. and zinc is important for wound healing,、mm. cell growth, and immune function.、Mm. And probiotics intake is very important for your kids, as a good bacteria that benefits gut health will further improve the immunity. As Seventy percent of the inner system is housed in the gut. Wow! So ensure、mm. your kids have the complete immunity support all the time, especially when they are staying outside or started going back to daycare or school. Mm. Mm. Good point. Wow! <coughs> Great advice from Chiing. Thank you so much. So, wrapping up this segment, so we've learned that. Uh, after discussing all the five myths, or whether you agree or disagree, the key is about the immunity, about supplementing your nutritional gaps with the right supplements. We've heard about vitamin C, zinc, gut health,、uh, probiotics. Wow, I think something exciting is coming up really soon, and I'm very excited to show you what this is all about.